Yes, we're recording, Renata, hello. We just saw the second semi-final, but I don't see you very excited, why? I, I don't know, actually. I think I, I started off really excited with the results, and then as the jury results started coming in, I just started getting this, like, I don't know, this really tinging feeling of, like, knowing now the aspect of the show that I really dislike is whatever is going on with the jury and the voting and the way that they have come to the results, something doesn't feel right to me. Yes, what's wrong with the jury? I mean, the other time uh, American Samoa was second, now it, was, it is ninth. Um, Kansas came out of the blue at the top of the jury, then Tennessee. It's a little bit confusing how they're voting, but they are mixing the results. Thank God the public voting is 100% the one that sends the qualifiers to the final. Yes, yeah, definitely. I think the jury picks, we clearly can see that they're way too safe in, in their choices. Um, and it is really good. I, 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 let's just talk about the results. I am so over the moon that Alabama made it through. I really thought they would. And so I'm so glad that America thought the same way that I did and brought them through to the finals. Somehow, I think that Oklahoma, Kentucky, and Alabama were um, the, the expected qualifiers. I think that Colorado was the surprise one. D don't you agree? I actually think that Alabama was the surprise because they don't have as much of a following, whereas Colorado, he was very famous because he was on Glee, this TV show. Uh, so he has a lot of fans. So I knew actually that he was going to qualify because just so many people were voting for him. Um, and I, I was unsure that Alabama would. Um, but we know because the juries don't like Colorado that even with 50-50 voting, they, that he would have to have the best public vote result to be able to even come close. We know how that, how left side, right side works in Eurovision. If the juries give you nothing, it's impossible to really win, even if you get the top vote on the public. Okay, now let's, let me take the, um, the states and territories alphabetically, and let's give a short comment uh, for, for each one. Um, I'm going to start with American Samoa. I think it was far sentimental. It was um, spreading her message, her personal message, and I think it's a personal issue now to vote for her. What do you think? Yeah, you know, what I really appreciate about Tanel's performance as a package is that um, it's one of the cases where we, we'd seen some people go really towards the type of their their location that they're from, some go against the type. And I really love that this was a really pure representation of the culture of the people from American Samoa. And I especially think in the context of being a Eurovision fan, that really does elevate it into something a bit more of a standout uh, for the whole competition. I'm moving now to California. Um, I think for me, they are great, but I think they lost a little bit of their hype from the uh, from uh, last week's uh, from their uh, quarterfinal. But I think there is something in in the name of California, in the song, somehow in the in the gimmick of the song. But somehow it, it's going to turn uh, good for them in the end. Oh, absolutely. This is just the beginning for them. I'm sure of it. Um, and I think maybe I see a little bit what you mean um, as far as it maybe having a little less punch this week than last time, um, because it was up against a lot more upbeat songs this week. We had Georgia, we had Texas. So I think there was a little bit more of that same style that maybe made it stand out a bit less. But I still really enjoyed the performance tonight and I thought they really they nailed it. Somehow the hosts made it um, made the whole show a little bit of debate between California and Texas this time. Yeah, because uh, Snoop and Kelly are from California and Texas, so they kind of had been doing that, teasing that uh, throughout the the show in the other episodes, but they really leaned into it with the like little fact matchups. Um, okay, uh, for Connecticut and Michael Bolton, my comment is that. Um, he is 
something separate from everyone. Uh, okay, I can understand if someone uh, like him, uh, him or the so his song or not, but for me, Michael Bolton felt as if he was the guest of the show tonight, not a participant. Yeah, almost a little bit like an interval act. They kind of had him doing a little like side thing too, where he was kind of singing a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think as the only legacy act in the show, um, or in the semifinals, that is, um, it does kind of come off a little bit as as a special guest. But I think that might also just be because he's so good. Um, because I thought he was really good today. I mean, his vocals are really good. Like you can see why he stayed uh, relevant for so long and had fans for so long because he still got it. And uh, what about Georgia Stella Cole? I'm so happy they had her in a new outfit this week. The first time she performed, she had been having issues with the outfit kind of like literally coming apart at the seams. And it seemed like she was a lot more comfortable this time around. And that honestly might have been because she wasn't worried that her outfit was going to rip on stage. And I think that she performed better than the last time, don't you think? I, I, I think as far as her stage presence is concerned, I think she did a lot better. I don't know vocally. I felt like um, she was leaning a little heavy into the playback, which I don't necessarily mind. I just would have liked to hear a little bit more of her, be a little bit louder. What what are your comments about Kansas brother uh, Kansas brother James Jones? I I love him and I love the song and I really liked the changes with the performance. They had the dancers in the darker outfits, which made them sparkle a little bit more. Um, I really wanted to see him stay on top, you know, until the end, but of course that didn't happen. So a little bit of a disappointment, but I think the public can carry him through. So you see, there is a, a difference between us because between Kansas and Tennessee, you like Kansas and I love I like Tennessee. I don't know, but Tennessee Tyler Brand, this 17, reminds me th there is already a song about uh, once upon a time we were 17. Mm -hmm. And also there is a Eurovision song, the Irish song of 1994, uh, which was started, we were once upon a time, we were 17 once upon a time. Oh, and somehow it it struck me back. So you you are not very keen about uh, Tennessee, right? Um, it's a song. Tennessee has a song. Um, it's not. No, it does absolutely nothing for me. I couldn't tell you a single lyric from the song other than we were seventeen. The seventeen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me in a and song contest, if I don't remember the chorus, then that's not good. And uh, I'm moving to New York. Anissa did an okay job, but for me the problem with Anissa is that she appeared in the social media today. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think um, as far as I understand, her Renata, there, are, there are some songs that uh, uh, there are really no comments. Yeah, well, no, as far as um, as far as uh, how much she's been pushing the contest, I would have liked to see more enthusiasm from her about being in the contest compared to how happy the other contestants seem to be. Um, I got a lot of annoyance from her. She even mentioned in her uh, little interview that she was like annoyed that she didn't make it through. Um, and uh, I would have expected a lot more from somebody coming back as a redemption. Like I felt like Ryan Charles came back and really kind of tried to blow the doors off the place. Whereas I felt like this was pretty much what we saw last time and didn't really take me on any kind of a journey or make me feel much of really anything at all. It was just really undersold and underwhelming to me. Uh, for North Carolina and John Morgan, uh, the sentiment that I have is that um, maybe it was it was too Amer it was too American for me. I think that for the U.S. viewers might have worked well. I will say that it was too American for me. Um, <laughs> it was really American, but I can see why people would like it. But okay, so here's the difference between Tennessee and North Carolina for me is that. Um, they're both kind of similar as far as type of song. They're very kind of 
pop country male ballad. Um, but I can remember the chorus and the melody to um, North Carolina. So I, I'll say that as a positive if it's memorable. But when it comes to, to typical American songs, North Dakota and Chloe Fredericks is the one that appealed to me. I love her voice. She nailed it. I love her. I love her from the uh, qualifying rounds. I thought she was even better this time around. She looked really good. She had like the fringe jacket. It was a lot more Western. And I just, I really hope the public pulls through and brings her in to the final because I think that she really deserves it. I think the song is good. Her performance is good. And it brings something else that's missing from the contest, which actually is female country vocalist because I believe she's the only one who made it this far, right? Yes. And uh, about Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico has something unique. It's not the hit song. It's not the song that you will say you love, but it's the song that it's, it, it brainwashes you and it makes you dance instantly when the song begins. Oh, I totally agree. It's really catchy. I've been listening to it while I'm driving. Um, and I just, I love with the windows down and it's just going to be a perfect summertime song. Um, I was looking at the uh, all of the competitors to, to do the voting and I was thinking like, oh boy, I'm really in trouble because um, I know I'm going to lose somebody. Even if my top four get picked, there's still like two or three other songs that I'd like to see in the final. Um, so I'm really nervous about how the results are going to come through. And last but not least, Mr. Independent or Mr. Perfect? Oh, he is Mr. Perfect and Mr. Perfectly underrated by the juries. Wow. It, it, that, that was insane because he had, for me, the best staging in the whole process of the American Song Contest. He was absolutely professional in every move. Um, he is uh, so much in contact with the fans in all social media platforms. He replies to everyone. He, he has great streaming uh, statistics. Uh, and I think he's heading for the trophy. If not for the trophy, he's heading for stardom. I mean, this kid has it. You know, I don't want to say the X Factor because that's a different show, but he has <laughs> he has something special about him. And I could really see him doing a lot and becoming a massive star once this is all over. So the one million dollar question is, what are your four qualifiers for next week? OK, not, so not your favorites. Your qualifiers, uh, have my in prediction. Mind how everything works, yes. My prediction, okay. Um, my prediction would be that uh, probably Kansas. Um, notice they didn't give us live voting results. Um, yes. But I would say probably Kansas because we know that he did really well with the public last time and his song's been on radio a lot and I think that could help him. Mm -hmm. um, I think California because it's got mass appeal. I think Texas because it's got mass appeal. And I think probably either Michael Bolton or Christian Pagan because I, I could see that Puerto Rican kind of block voting because Puerto Ricans live all over the other states. Um, so they really could, could do a lot for him voting wise. Um, and Michael Bolton has that fame level. Um, I, but I don't know, it's a toss up. I think it's really hard to predict. What do you think? I think that um, Puerto Rico will, uh, will beat uh, American Samoa because of, of what you said, because of the Puerto Rican uh, population in the U.S. So for me, it's going to be Texas, Puerto Rico, North Dakota, mm, North know. Dakota, California. Oh, sorry. North Dakota, California, Texas, and Puerto Rico, you said. I mean, I could see that happening. That seems totally possible to me. But it's going to be weird, an American Song Contest final without the big state of New York inside. I'm, but, just, I'm, I'm just saying. But California and Texas, 
you know, and New York wasn't in uh, four other episodes. So yeah, the whole, the country isn't New York. As much as New Yorkers like to think that the rest of the country is the same, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't, they don't rule everything that happens in this country. So that's it. In one week, we will know the winner, Renata. Yeah, well, and I think we find out our qualifiers on Wednesday, although I wasn't sure what they were saying. Everything kind of ran together, but it sounded like they'll be releasing our qualifiers on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that, I guess. So that's it. I will see you in one week. And thank you so much for this session again. You are wonderful. And I'm, uh, I, from what I'm seeing behind the stage is that you're preparing great things for us. Oh, always, always scheming and coming up with new things. Yum, yum, I would say. So, another good morning from Athens. Good evening from Pittsburgh. And see you in a week. See you in a week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.